Smart 42451. Today we are going to be doing a secondary air pump, which is located right here. First, let's start off with the box. Here we go, there's your part number. Normally with smart car parts, they have an A here, but I have the feeling that they use this pump in multiple different vehicles. So the part number is just 000-140-6385. Made in China, like everything else. This is literally what you get in the box. And as far as I can tell, this is an OEM. So OE meaning original equipment, it would have a Mercedes or a smart logo on the part itself. OEM stands for original equipment manufacturer, meaning it's the exact same part, but they do not have the Mercedes or the smart logo on it. And it's far cheaper that way, but it's literally the exact same quality, exact same part. Man, this feels really good but I do not notice any markings on it at all. We got this from our parts supplier, which does not sell us junk. So I'm gonna assume this is the real deal right here. And in the box, when you order the real thing, you get this nice closed cell foam. That's all that's in the box. So you basically get the pump and you get the four rubber mounts and that's gonna be it. So first things first, I think it's probably going to be best to remove the inner fender here and also have the, you know, uh, maintenance flap slash trunk hood, whatever, open and work at it from both sides. First thing we're going to be doing is jacking up the car, getting the wheels off and let's go from there. As you can see, the wheel is off. The secondary air pump is literally right here. I'm touching the hose that goes into it. There's the pump itself. I don't know what kind of a good view that gives you or not. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attack it from here. It lives right up in this area. This is the passenger side. So there's going to be these clips. You got one here. You're going to have a 10 millimeter plastic, plastic screws just like that. There's one down there. There's two up here. There's a third one up there. That's just a blank. And I believe there's these, there's this here. And then you have to remove that one and that one. Just a, basically a couple of these clips, a couple of 10 millimeter little nylon 10 millimeter bolts and we're gonna get that out and pull this inner fender out so just a quick update do not actually don't remove these because i remembered from a prior job if you pull this out it's just a huge pain to get it slotted behind this rocker panel here so i'm actually going to put these two clips back in and i'm going to leave it hanging like this it's a huge pain to get that back in so never mind don't do that and it's also more difficult to get this that particular nut back in and trying to get this fender liner situated properly but here's the pump you have a few bolts that are holding it as you can see it's mounted to a bracket the way you want to do this is usually it's easiest to just simply unbolt whatever bracket is holding a secondary air pump pull the entire bracket out after you unplug it exchange the pump in the bracket outside of the vehicle and then put the entire assembly back in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull out this bolt looks like there's another one back there I don't know how well you can see. There's that guy. And then you just want to look around. There's another one down here. Looks like there is a some kind of a box or something. I've never done this particular job, so I'll just figure this out as I go. I'm gonna pull this out and then I'm gonna show you what, what bolts to get and how to get them. Okay, get ready for some craziness. So first off, you're gonna need to remove the T27 bolt that holds the frame right there bolts look like this t27 you're gonna need to remove this one and you're gonna need, the one first one i'm talking about is back there where my finger was earlier this number two here's how you get to number three you have to loosen there's these 10 millimeter bolts on the vibration dampers here these are rubber so it's okay they're bendable you want to remove all three one two and then there's three on the other side you got one two three here this you got to remove is the two ground wires that bolt right there with a 10 millimeter you remove the two grounds just to get them out of your way right you got these two screws right here these both are these little guys are t20 and there's one under here so what you're after you've loosened these three you're gonna move this it's rubbery you're gonna pull it out just enough for you to get one over here and then you're gonna push this entire assembly that way and get the and get the second one from underneath here and that'll loosen this whole thing that'll allow you to move all this pretty much freely to where at which point you can get some kind of a pry lift it up 
and get yourself a low profile, something that you can shove in there just to crack that bolt loose. See how freely it moves now? And now I'm gonna pull this tool out. I'm gonna put my fingers in here and remove this nut, which will allow me to remove the entire assembly without dropping the engine. Based off of how tight everything is, I'm assuming the way this was designed to be removed is simply by lowering the engine in its cradle. There's four bolts. There's something called service bolts. They're very long bolts and you remove them one by one and that allows you to lower the engine to where it allows you to work on all kinds of stuff here without taking the engine out, but it does lower it. But this allows you to break that last, last bolt free. I'm gonna pull this out, remove that bolt, and then I'll pull this out and show you how everything is. As you can see, I've wiggled it out of there, just like I said. There's one thing I didn't notice is there is a clip right here that goes into the top of it. So you have to pop that out before it allows you to pull it out. And be gentle because you still have this final connector to the secondary air pump right here. So it just pops off by, you can gently remove, you can either use some kind of a screwdriver, gently pull these up. Cause normally these get super brittle. They're designed to be pushed on and pulled out. But usually if you're pushing on it and it's not pulling out, be very gentle with a screwdriver. Lift the tabs and just disconnect the whole thing. There, now that we've disconnected it, because earlier you removed these vibration dampers right there, it just slides away from the bracket, no problem. There's your bracket. Here's your new pump, just like that. And this is just rubber. This should be able, if I had two hands, it'd be a lot easier, but you just have the two hands, pops out right off. This will pop onto your new connection here, but you wanna transfer this bracket right here. And it uses basically a reverse Torx. It is literally called female Torx. I just call it a reverse Torx, whatever. But they look like that. That's the type of tool you need. I believe it's a 10 millimeter just off. Of, yeah, I was correct. So it is a 10 millimeter or size 10, E10, I believe. Yep, E10. And it just fits on just like that. You want to go ahead and transfer the bracket over and that's it at that point it's just going backwards but i'm gonna see if i can give this guy some 10 volt juice to let you hear what it sounds like and as you can tell it looks like water got into mine and it rusted the bearings because when it spins yeah there's water in there when it spins my goodness this thing sounds like a death machine <laughs> that's why i'm replacing it it's just gone bad it looks like yeah moisture got into mine and it's kind of dead but yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get this powered. If not, I'm gonna transfer everything over, pop everything back in and just show you what it should sound like when it's cold and properly working. As you can see, I reassembled mine. Something I realized is that this is probably for a different vehicle because these vibration dampers mount from two ends and the vibration dampers on the bracket, they're, they're glued to the bracket. So there's no way to use the new ones. You have to reuse the old ones. I've put this, to me it seems like a volume and then there's a drain for the water as it's sucking air in. So air gets sucked in. It doesn't allow the water to accumulate and then fresh air without any water goes through the secondary air pump. And as right here, you can see how one of these big bolts right here, it's supposed to be unscrewed from the top. And clearly you have to drop the engine to do that. So this job was designed to be done with the engine either lowered in the vehicle or completely pulled out. But with our little trick here to where we remove these two smaller screws from the bottom, these little guys, by pushing it one way, the whole bracket one way, removing one, pushing it the other way, removing one. And that allowed us access to this screw, which was hidden right here. So we're just gonna go backwards. I'm not gonna screw these last two in right now. I'm gonna put it back in push the entire mechanism one way, push it the other way after getting this guy and then we're just gonna go from there. So just go backwards. And I don't know if I were you, I just clean up a little bit. But this little guy, I noticed that there is the factory part numbers. I will include them in the beginning of the video, but there's the original unit. It's a Bosch part numbers, Alpha 0001406385 which you can tell right there is the exact same part number. It's just the Bosch. And when it's Mercedes, like I told you earlier, this is an OE part. So it's got the Mercedes logo with an A. And this guy here doesn't get the Mercedes logo and doesn't get the A and it's literally four or five times cheaper. This was, I believe I paid $127 for the pump. 
This from Mercedes is about 600 some odd dollars. So you have the part number, go and find it cheaper. Don't waste your money on this. But yeah, I'm gonna pop everything back in and show you the results. As you can see, everything's back in. All the mounts are on, all the screws are in. You gotta put your ground back on. Make sure to plug the secondary air pump itself back in. And at the back end, don't forget to connect the wire, I mean the, the air hose to the secondary air pump. I had a few things unplugged, put everything back in. So for me personally, I had some clips undone just to kind of move some things out of my way, put all the clips back in, make sure everything's reconnected. And then just double check your work, make sure all your screws are in place, that 10,000 miles from now, you're not gonna have something just to wear out. Like there is this tape around this, uh, shield that goes to the secondary air pump wire it's even got a little rounded thing of tape right there when it bounces up against this or vibrates so it doesn't wear out so right there's some more it's just kind of one of those things make sure you put everything back exactly how you found it and everything's reinstalled so at this point i'm just going to put the shield back on and show you the finished result okay so here i got the the old one you can see the part number there so i didn't pull this this is not some random one i just welded some wire to it as you can see it's the same one that i just pulled out of my car i'm going to bench test it to show you how loud a bad one is ready you hear that that's how you know the bearings are bad inside of these so this one belongs only in one wonderful little place let me show you where this guy belongs you ready ready perfect so here's what it should sound like with a cold start. Can you hear it? Barely. That's exactly what it should sound like with a cold start. You shouldn't really be hearing anything. And there you go. Everything's fixed. Hope this helped you out. Have a nice day.